Hello and welcome to another video in the Dex.tip series on aggregations. In this video we're going to focus on the storage mode that you can select for individual tables involved in the data model uh, using when you're using aggregations. So for this example we're going to keep things quite simple. My underlying data source is a direct query Azure SQL DB um, of, of AdventureWorks data and I'm going to have a single fact table here which I'll keep in direct query mode. So we'll just click on fact internet sales and uh, we can see in the advanced properties that this table is in direct query mode. I've also got three identical copies of the same date dimension table, but each of the three copies um, it uses a, the, one of the three storage modes that you can select, uh, direct query, dual, and import. And what we'll do is we'll have a look at the two very common patterns that get generated by Power BI visuals, and then just study the, um, the, the, what happens under the covers over in, in DAX Studio. So let's jump to the canvas and the first pattern we're going to have a look at is the pattern used to get data for slices and filters. So let's turn on the Power BI Performance Analyzer, start recording and we'll start with the direct query version here. So we'll, we'll expand and we'll focus just on calendar year. So I want a slicer that allows my end user to select uh, uh, either a single or multiple calendar years. So the slicer just needs a, needs a distinct list of uh, what options are available from the calendar year column uh, and, and this would be applied to any other column in the in a dimension table so um, let's click slicer oh and now let's choose the field that we want to use for my slicer so I'll drag that across to here and here we go we're generating a query and it's spinning because it's issuing a query to the direct query table only took about seven seconds um, but let's have a look to see what's going on with there. So we can expand this and copy query. And I'm now going to open DAX Studio uh, from my external tool ribbon, which, which will open uh, in another window. And this will be connected to our Power BI model. And if I paste in the contents, um, now if you see this dialog, what it's detecting is that what I've copied from the Performance Analyzer window over in Power BI is not just the uh, DAX query but also the um, T-SQL query as well which is kind of interesting but let's grab the DAX query only not very interesting it's just generating um, a, a list of calendar years now if we uh, turn on server timings and uh, run this oh this is actually just giving us the um, max and min I'm going to paste in everything both DAX and direct query All right okay let's jump back to power bi and why did that give us just maximum ah because of this here so what i'm going to do is change my query uh this now to be a a list rather than just getting the the minimum max value potentially possible so that's quite an that's a that's, a, that's an interesting insight of um uh, what power bi is doing to populate a uh, a date slicer in this mode but let's go back down to a, um, a drop down. Okay, a little quicker. I'm going to expand this. Okay, here we go. We can copy that query. And now let's take that back over. And I'm going to paste it over the top of our previous query. Dax query only. So this is a little bit more like um, what I was expecting to see. The actual value, the, the Dax function that's driving most of this is values. And that says, give me a distinct list of values from the calendar year column in the dim date DQ table and um, then what we're going to do is we're only going to grab the top 101 values and in my case um, that's still going to return all the rows this would be useful if you're perhaps um, your slicer was over a column with uh, many hundreds of rows you know it's not going to grab the whole lot at once it's just going to grab the first hundred uh, or so and then allow you to page through and then we just simply run the query here. So with our server timing still on, we run the query. Oh, I, I have something clicked. We're going to run that again. We see the result set has got our unique list of calendar year options available. Now why I want to focus on the server timings tab is because this gives, gives us some insight over what Power BI is sending to the direct query source in this case. And I'll run the query again. Here we go. So the subclass is SQL. Now that implies that it is a direct query as opposed to import. 
And when we click on this line, we can study the XM SQL that gets generated, which is quite straightforward. Um, what are we doing here? We're selecting the calendar year from a query that just says select star effectively from dim date and then it's grouping by C15 and uh, OO which are these two things. So it's actually grouping by both of these columns so it's not doing any joins and um, it's also handling the, the, the case of null. So that's, that's pretty straightforward. Now let's, um, but it's the, the important thing here to note is it's still going out to the, the, the direct query source to do this. Let's change this now to say I want to instead use my import table and run this query. Uh, I'm going to have to change this in two places, possibly three. <laughs> All right, and run that. The result set is similar, um, but it's incredibly quick now. You know, just milliseconds. There were um, we, the subclass of scan, which means it was used the internal import version of the table and we don't get the same XM SQL because really all it's grabbing is the list of unique calendar year tables from import. Now what happens if we use the dual table because remember a dual table can be both direct query and import at exactly the same time and what we're hoping Power BI does is use the import version of that table of the dual table uh, when it makes sense and this is an example when that makes sense because we can grab all of the values we need from the import version of the table. We hit run and it's identical. And if we look at the results, we've got the results. So this is the case where when you have your dimension table uh, in dual mode, Power BI will use the import version of that dual mode table when it makes sense to. And in this case, it's using the import version. So now let's flip this over and have a look to see um, when Power BI might use the direct query version of this dimension table when it makes sense. So what we're going to do is we'll, we'll delete this slicer, we'll clear these out, and perhaps I'm going to build a, uh, a visual that's going to sum my sales. So let's grab sales amount, and we are going to group by direct query calendar year. So we'll pop that into the visual and it's smart enough to um, put calendar year on the axis. Um, so we've got some sales here in 2005 and we've got some additional sales in 2011, 2012, 2013 data. This, this um, AdventureWorks data is, is pretty old. But let's have a look to see what happened. Um, to uh, you know, how did Power BI go about getting this data? Did it get some of it from import? Did it get some of it from direct query? Let's go and see. Now expanding the performance analyzer shows us that there was some direct query activity in the ac action to get the data needed to generate this visual. So I'm going to copy this query, go back to DAX Studio, we'll delete the previous query and paste this in. We'll paste in the DAX query only. There's a bit more activity here. Um, but what we want to focus on is here, summarize columns. Simple as that. All of the rest is just cosmetic stuff. In fact, what I'm going to do is uh, clear out all this other um, activity that's to do with uh, helping to format the visual. It's very, very um, slow. Uh, sorry, it's, it's not it's not going to impact on performance. So let's just have a look here. So what Power BI is essentially saying is I would like to perform a sum over the sales amount column in the fact internet sales table and I want to group by calendar year because remember for summarized columns the first parameters that you pass to this um, function or the first parameters that get passed this function are grouped by. How do I want to group this, this data? Um, and we're not doing any filtering or anything like that. So quite simply, let's have a run, let's have a look to see what happens with the direct query version of the dim, dim table. So we run this and we get a result set. These numbers, just trust me, they determine the, 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 the height of the, um, the column um, and they are probably the right values. 
but I'm more interested in the server timings again. So when we come to here, what we can see is that only one storage engine activity took place. That, that single storage engine activity is a direct query activity because we have a subclass of SQL. And when we click on that, we can go over and study the XM SQL that gets generated. The other thing I also want to highlight here is that um, uh, all the activity took place in the storage engine. There's no, no subsequent activity or follow-up work in the formula engine to, to take what the storage engine uh, collects and then post-process or further process here. So what sort of query does this generate? We have a straight um, uh, sum, sorry, the sum is of sales amount and the other column here is calendar year. And if we drop to the bottom, I'm expecting to see a group by calendar year. So this is nice and efficient. Our direct query source will like this. We've got a couple of derived tables or subqueries. And we're querying from and what is essentially, just imagine this as select star from fact internet sales, and it's performing a left outer join to the uh, select star of the dim table. I mean, we, we can switch this left outer join over to an inner join if we wanted to, but this, this allows us to um, present a line for blanks or, or rows in the fact table that do not get matched to a calendar year in the um, dimension table. But this is nice and clean. And the outcome is when you do copy this SQL over into your data source and run it in a client tool like SQL Server Management Studio, um, the number of results that this query will produce will match here. We'll only get one, two, three, four, five, six rows back from the data source and only two columns. So that's incredibly efficient. That, that's actually pretty good. Now, you might say, well, why don't we just use the direct query um, uh, version? Or why don't we keep our dim date table in direct query? Well, the previous example that I showed you where um, slices uh, makes much more sense to get them from the import version. Um, mean, okay, do we use import? Do we use direct query? And this is why Jewel's pretty good. Now, now let's have a look at this query, um, this exact same query, but running in import mode to see what goes on under the covers to produce what is essentially the um, same same result sets. So we run the query and boom, we lose the blank row and um, there's, there are good reasons for that. But otherwise the numbers shown here should be exactly the same for um, each grouping of calendar year uh, because these are still coming from the direct query table. So let's have a look at the server timings for this. So straight away, what's interesting is we have storage engine activity of 1.1 seconds plus there's some formula engine activity as well. Now previously in the direct query version we didn't have that. Um, what's also different here is we have two storage engine events. There's a scan. Now the scan goes to the import table to go and collect a list of, um, uh, interestingly, now the, the date table, the, the primary key of the date um, uh, dimension is on date key, unique days, not on calendar year. So what we, what this is retrieving is for every single uh, value, value of the primary key or date, let's get a pair of date and calendar year. Now what's it going to do with this query? Now here's where it gets interesting. Let's have a look at the SQL statement that gets produced and sent to the um, uh, data source. Now note also that there are 3,600 rows returned in this import scan. So the SQL statement that gets generated starts to look quite similar. We have a sum over a column and we're, we're selecting from uh, uh, something else. This is an alias which just gets grouped by at the very bottom. And we are um, uh, doing a select star from what is the fact, what is the, whoop, fact internet sales table. So this is normal up to here. But now what we're doing is we're doing an inner join onto, and look at this repetitive pattern as I scroll down. Now what these represent are um, internal IDs for column 66 and that particular one happens to be the calendar year and notice over here we've got a, uh, a another value for column 22 and these are year date and month so we're generating 3652 pairs of date and year columns and generating I kid you not a massive massive T-SQL query text statement which gets sent over the network I don't know how big this is. If I went, if I copied this into a text file and went file save and had a look at the file size, it's it's not going to be small. So that gets sent to the direct query data source. 
which produces the correct result, returns that back to Power BI, and then when Power BI gets it, it does a little more work in the formula engine to finish that off um, with, with what we need. And let's face it, that, that's not a particularly efficient approach um, to go, but this is happening every time you have an, a dimension table in import mode connecting to a fact table in direct query mode. So to solve this, um, what we do is we just we use the dual version of that table. Now remember when I showed you the DQ version of dim date table, everything was quite efficient. We had one storage engine scan, this XM SQL that was was optimized for the data set to return the right number of rows and, and without <laughs> generating a big massive query text. Uh, and there was no work in the formula engine. So let's have a look at to see how this performs. Click run and boom, you know, again, it's, 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 it's pretty efficient. So we have a very short T-SQL statement in this case, or XM-SQL, um, where we're joining the fact table to the dimension table, we're grouping by the calendar year column in the dimension table, and the result set that this single storage engine event produces is the right number of, um, uh, well, the right values in, in the right rows, and then, um, you know, that's what um, the, the visual can then use very quickly to start producing the report. So hopefully this video made sense. Um, as I've mentioned in my article, I have come across quite a few scenarios recently where um, uh, you know these composite mode models are using the import storage mode for import tables. And it's not necessarily immediately obvious, um, you know, the, the the extra work that's needing to go on under the covers when flicking it over to dual mode. Now, this is part of a series focusing on focusing on aggregations. So this is especially important when you're doing that. But if even if you're not producing or building a model, um, and you're if you're not building a model that uses aggregations, the same principle applies. So if your fact table happens to be in um, direct query mode, then you know do configure your dimension tables to be dual, so that slices can use the import version of the dual table, and um, uh, visual queries like this that, are, that, that perform aggregations over the columns in the fact table, but group by columns or filter by columns in the dimension tables, when that dimension table is in dual mode, it'll it'll use the appropriate storage mode. So hopefully this is helpful. You know, please feel free to leave comments in the um, in this YouTube uh, channel or back on my blog. Um, and you know, I'd love to hear if you um, if this is helpful to you. So I hope you watch this. I hope you enjoy this video. And yeah, look out for the next one I'm doing on mixed grain mixed grain aggregations. Thank you.